Oh yeah, that's more like it. And when dealing with celestial navigation, this is what I was thinking about. But for today, we're going to go ahead and uh, work through it anyway. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is the third video in our little celestial navigation series. Uh, we're going to be doing some stuff a little later on with triangulation. But not for now. Like I said, you want to come to, uh, be very, very comfortable with that initial star shot. The next complication we're going to have today is going to be dealing with the fact that our aircraft is going to be moving, which now means that our assumed position needs to be calculated a little bit more precisely, but everything else still needs to be the case. So in this case, uh, we're sitting here uh, nice and high at uh, 5,000 feet. Actually, I don't want to be at 5,000 feet. I actually like to come down to exactly 5,000 feet. Uh, one of the reasons that we want to try to keep this as precise as possible is, as we saw in the previous video, it does not take much to go ahead and get yourself way off course here. Also, hello everyone, I forgot that part. <laughs> Alright, 5,000 feet, we're good to go. So here's what we need to know. We're going to need to know what our speed is, we're going to have to need to know what our current position is, and we're basically going to have to interpolate both of those to guess where we're supposed to be, so then we can then predict where the stars are going to be, so that we can calculate where they aren't. <laughs> it's always kind of fun when you look at it that way. So what do we know? Uh, we know that our aircraft right now is at a cruise speed of about 210 knots. Uh, we know that we're at an altitude of about 5,000 feet. We notice that we are at a heading of, it looks about 90 seven degrees. Now, that's a lot of useful information for us. So let's go pop over to the nav map, map real quick. So we can see um, I've gone ahead and marked the position of the plane already. This is actually a live update of my particular plane position so that you can see exactly how tricky this gets to be. So let's go ahead and assume that we're going to be going ahead and taking our position exactly at, let's go ahead and zoom up here, weather. Now I can see our current time is 4.46 p.m. That's 3.46 p.m. UTC. So if we wanted to take our clock, our little thing at 5 o'clock UTC, that'd be, um, let's see, 12 plus five would be 1900. Uh, that'd be 1700, first of all. <laughs> we would then have to go ahead and calculate where on the earth we are before we could do that particular position. So what I'm gonna do is pop back over to the airplane real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it, which is a very naughty thing to do, but it's gonna work great for our purposes here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and assume that we had a very, very, very good fix. So let's say uh, this is a DR fix. Again, this would be a dead reckoned fix for that exact specific time. So go back to the flight sim real quick on uh, the exact specific time. We're gonna go take a look here and we're gonna say that is, uh, I'm gonna call that 47, yeah, 47 and a half. So that would be uh, 547. Now, of course, you wanna do this in UTC. So we're gonna do 1747 UTC. Just reminding us that oh, we're not making ourselves incredibly crazy here. So this is my assumed position. Uh, at this time. However, we want to be able to take an assumed position when we get to exactly the next time, which if we take a look at our clock inside real fast, go to the uh, little thing here, we can see, uh, like I said, we want to get there right when we cross. Oh, this makes me slightly insane in the brain sometimes. <laughs> so it was actually four o'clock, which would have been 1600. Whoopsies. Let's go ahead and fix that because uh, that would have been a disaster on my part. So be very careful which clock you're actually using here. So let's check it one more time. So that was uh, th uh, 346, which would be 15... 47 UTC. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So now we have our dead reckon fix. So now we need to calculate where we're going to be 13 minutes from now when we take our actual fix of the side itself. So what I'm going to do is I know that we're moving at 263 knots. So we know we're going to be traveling for another 14 minutes. Actually, it's going to be 13 minutes now. We'll do 14. Uh, we know it's out of 60. That's going to be a 0.23. That's going to be a total of a 0.23 of an hour. So if we know we're traveling at 260 knots, uh, three knots, which is a very difficult number to get accurately in the sky, by the way, we know that if we travel that speed or that amount of time, we know our distance, in which case we will have traveled 61.279 nautical miles from this position by the time we get there. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and grab that and we're going to create ourselves a little range thing. So we know our aircraft right now is a 97 magnetic. Uh, we'd have to know our true course in this case, in which case our track is also 97. So we're going to go ahead and draw ourselves a little line from this particular position going into the future a total amount of distance that we just calculated a few moments ago. Unfortunately, the nav map can make this a little difficult sometimes. So we're going to grab that and we need to go 61, let's make sure, 61.279, 61.279, 61.279. 61.279, 61, it's going to be about right there. But remember, we said the magnetic was going to be 97, so we actually have to come down a little bit. 97, this is why we draw these things in the real world. Bing! So we know that, well, we don't know, we're great guessing, that when we get to the time where we have to actually go ahead and calculate our position, we know we're going to be roughly here. So I'm going to go ahead and recreate that, put this one. And this one is going to be assumed position. Let's check the time for the 500th time, because you know how wonderful I've been about that so far. It's going to be at 1600 UTC. 
1600 UTC. That is going to be the position I expect to be at that time. So this is also going to give us critical things like a latitude and longitude. Remember, you don't get decimals when you're working with um, celestial navigation. You're just going to get um, degrees and minutes. So I'm going to set this to zero because this is as accurate as we can be. And I'm going to set that to zero, which gets us an assumed position of 3217, 1335. I'm going to press OK. And this is going to be our assumed position right here. So I'm going to pop back in the simulator real quick. We're going to go ahead and uh, cheat just a tiny bit. I've been frozen this whole time. Let me unfreeze and make sure we're still traveling. Can't see anything over water. This is one of the scary things about flying over water, in my opinion. And let's go ahead and uh, ground candling. <laughs> let's get a little bit closer to that assumed position. By the way, this is a standard equipment on all DC-6s. So you just press the button and whoosh, you're a little closer to position. Nice. So we're assuming, of course, that everything worked, that our wind didn't mess around, and nothing bad happened. And you can see we're getting close to when we're actually going to be doing our calculation here. You can see it's about 450. Uh, we want to be crossing this position. Remember, this is an assumed position we don't actually know in the real world at that estimated time. So now we can go run over and start doing our calculations here. Let's go ahead and grab this. Let's grab our handy-dandy little sun chart. Today's uh, the 5th. Uh, we're going to be taking a shot. Remember, we're going to be taking a shot at 4 o'clock UTC, which is 1600 UTC. So we'll go here and we'll go down to 16. We expect the sun to be at 6046. So we'll go ahead over to our sun sight reduction. We expect it at 6046. So 6046. Uh, checking, checking, checking. Remember it's 16, 6043.6. 6043.6. 60, 43.6. Then 15, 12.5. 15, 12.5. Check it for five more times. Let's see here, 6043.6, 6043.6, uh, 15, 12.5. 15, 12.5. Delightful. We're going to set this up to a bubble horizon. We're going to use the center of the object. I don't know how you could actually do that. And then we're going to go ahead and dial in our assumed position. I'm going to pull this aside so I can see it just a little bit better here. Keep in mind, um, you have to be flying during all this, which makes this much more exciting than it really needs to be. All right, so our assumed position here was going to be, uh, we are easting or westing right now? We're westing. We're actually very close to the uh, GMT here. So we are at 3217 north. 3217 north. Again, there's a 3217. And our westing is 1335. 1335. And this is to the west, not to the east. Correct. It's a W. Let's go ahead and confirm that for you. So again, 6043.6 came off of here for that time of day. We've got our um, position. Our longitude is 1335, latitude 3217. All this has been checked three more times. Um, our index error today is uh, going to be two minutes. Yep, two minutes. So we're just going to put two minutes in. Height of the eye, we're at 5,000 feet. This has to be above surface. So keep in mind, this is actually a tricky number. You can put these other ones in here, but nothing bad happens. Now it's just a matter of going ahead and taking our measurement. Uh, this is the scary part. I'm going to go ahead and press OK there. We're not quite to our destination. Let's go pop over the sim and take a look what time it is. Ah, it looks like uh, we're getting very, very close to the time that we need this to actually take place. Remember, when you take a time, it is a two-minute sight. Because what you're actually doing is since you're moving, you're taking your average position. And since it's a two-minute sight, that means if we're taking a sight at exactly the hour, we need to make sure we start it a minute early. We need to make sure we end it a minute late so that our average position that we're measuring is going to be dead on the actual time we calculate. Now, keep in mind, you have the ability to actually take multiple calculations. Like I could do a four minute calculation. I could do an eight and 15 minute calculation. Any of those are legal. The reason we're not going to use those is because uh, that's going to get a little advanced and we'll do that a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and again, we're cheating here. Again, this is our expected dead reckoned position here. And you can see we're going to be hitting there in just a few moments. So what I'm going to do is cheat just a lot. <laughs> Get us a little bit closer. Whoop. Whoa. And you can see we're going to hit that point. And what we'll do is we'll actually pause right when we do this as if everything worked perfectly. And again, nothing, everything did not work perfectly because I'm uh, have, trying to explain this and not having a piece of paper in front of me at the same time makes this exceptionally challenging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume my dead reckon position was that position. So we're crossing it now. Pause. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to wait for time to get a little bit closer to when we actually need to do it. By wait, I mean, I'm going to come back in here. I'm just going to grab this thing and uh, get us a little bit closer to the correct time, 53. I really miss when you used to have a button where you could just like click it. Ah, 57, a little bit closer. Let me go ahead and move my head so you can see this very, very clearly. All right. Cool. So notice the time is still tracking. And remember, in the real world, we'd still be moving. For the purposes of this today, I'm freezing all these elements so you can see the way everything's going to break itself down. So we need to go ahead and take our sunshot exactly when it gets to the correct time. Almost there. Almost there. 
just don't get your uh, timings confused because you're off by a minute. You have uh, basically knocked 15 miles off your estimated position. Keep in mind, normally the plane still would have been moving. Ready, click. And uh, this time I will be a nice person and I will go ahead and uh, skip this part. Oh, and I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> At least the button worked that time. All right, so what's going to happen now is our sunshot is going to come rushing in. Keep in mind, normally the plane would have been moving, but I just wanted to walk you through the calculations that you'd have to do. And we have our numbers, 4411. Here we go. So we come in here, 4411. Calculate! So this says that the observation, the height of the body itself, is at 44.8. This uh, Remember, this is our height. We have our computed altitude, which it's supposed to be, of 4416, which means our azimuth is 259. It means our intercept is 6.4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in the plane. I'll go ahead and unfreeze it here so I can allow it to do what it's supposed to do, which is, you know, fly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take those two pieces of information, and we're going to go ahead and plot them so that we have our position of this particular spot. So remember, this was our assumed position. We actually don't know where we really are if this were a normal site. So we're going to go ahead and uh, right click here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some measurements here. I'm going to measure distance from here and what we're going to do is we're just going to plot what we just calculated. So the azimuth here was 259 uh, which puts it over here. Right here remember we're dealing with true so it's 259 true and we know that it's 6.4 nautical miles. 6.4 nautical miles and we said what we say 259 259. Gotta check it one more time. Right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new user point. So this is star position. We'll call it CP. Eh, I'm not gonna call it CP. There's a reason for that. Star position, UTC. Remember this, we did it correctly this time. So four o'clock would be 1600. And we press OK. And there we have it. So our dead reckoned position, this is a calculation from dead reckoning, put us here. Our star position put us over here. So what normally would happen is, of course, I'd have a little line I'm plotting this sucker on. And what I would do is say, okay, Captain, uh, we're a little bit to the south. Can you come left one degree? He'd come one left degree. And then an hour later, when we're probably you know right about here, I do my next calculation to go ahead and see what I am. So hopefully this video is helpful. Like I said, uh, celestial navigation is incredibly sophisticated, but it works. In a future video, we're going to go ahead and do a night shot which is going to get us three lines and we're going to use those three lines to position exactly where we are without any knowledge of where we actually are like i said i've left all these features on so that you can kind of see the concept sort of in action so you can have a better idea of what's going on when you're making those different calculations as you're cruising along enjoy